Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain Lookout. Which is the best antenna tuner? Uh, by that I mean not what can it match, but what are the losses in the tuner? Um, a big tuner probably has fewer losses than a small tuner because the Q of the coils is going to be higher. But I don't know. I was talking to uh, um, Ivan Shapiro, uh, WK1W, and the question came up about antenna tuners and how efficient they are. And I don't know the answer to that. So which is the most efficient antenna tuner? If you put 100 watts into it, what comes out? If you put 500 watts into it, what comes out? Uh, little guys like this or big ones like my Nye Viking, which is good for 1500 watts all day long, every day, RTTY. has big coils in it. I also have a Drake... Um, uh, MN2000 has slightly smaller coils, but it's also good for, uh, in the rules that existed in the 1960s, uh, 2,000 watts input, about 1,200 watts output. Which is the most efficient one? Uh, could it be a little one like this, or that's automatic, or a big one? And, and I took the cover off of this um, LDG um, AT200. This is what it looks like on the inside. It's got uh, little, let's turn it this way, little toroidal coils, relays to switch between the coils, relays to switch between the capacitors. These coils are maybe, uh, try it this way, maybe an inch, well, maybe an inch and a quarter in diameter. Uh, this one, they're even smaller. So my guess is because the coils on this are relatively small and the Q is probably lower, they're not going to be as efficient. Uh, where, what what efficiency do you use when you're designing a tuner because you have a customer who's going to want to tune it and not have it retuned every time uh, the customer moves a few kilohertz? Back to the question, and how do we figure it out? Well, I, I think the easiest way is to transmit into uh, some of the tuners that I have. So I'll take the um, Nye Viking, the MN2000, and this one, because this one's automatic, and I'll transmit into it. And... Uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, one of Larry Phipps' um, N8LP, uh, one of his uh, watt meters, and two couplers. So I can put one coupler at the input and one coupler at the output of the tuner. So one coupler will be attached here, and this is antenna number one. The other coupler, the other coupler will be here, and I can switch back and forth so I can read the watts going in and the watts coming out. And I think what, and I'll, what I'll do is a screen grab of the... Um, um, uh, software that Larry provides and it'll show the watts coming out and the watts going in if I switch correctly between the two. So that means I've got to uh, coordinate switching uh, readings, keying the transceiver, making sure I've got the right one connected. So there'll be a bunch of jump cuts in the video. Um, it'll be interesting to figure out which one is, is better. Again, my guess is this is not as efficient as a uh, big one. Uh, the losses, I don't know. So we'll have to go see. Anyway, here comes the video. It's going to be kind of jumpy, maybe a bit blurry. I'm not sure how the screen grab is going to work out, but we'll get an idea for, for what's what. So uh, watch the rest of this video, and at the end I'll uh, come back with a comment after I figure out what the heck happened. All right, see you on the other side. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to... Um, Start and stop the uh, the video recorder as needed. Okay, so let's first see if both couplers to the watt meter read the same. And I'm going to transmit uh, 100 watts and see what the uh, the couplers read. See how close they are. So I'll start up the uh, video recorder so you can see what's going on. Uh, what we're looking at is the uh, screen from the LP100. And there's um, uh, 103, uh, 100 and, okay, 104 watts. So that's that's the in coupler. This is the out coupler. So I'll switch over, and it is 103.4. So about six tenths of a watt different between the two couplers, which is uh, we'll keep that in mind. It, it doesn't amount to anything, but <clears throat> we now know that the two couplers read slightly 
different values. One is about six tenths of a watt different from the other. Um, next part of this will be to uh, look at the uh, the Nye Viking watt meter, which is uh, a really heavy duty big one, and I'm going to put power into it. And I'll read the uh, first. I'm going to put it in a bypass, so I'll I'll transmit into it now with by and have it in the bypass mode. So I'll read the uh, power going in and the power coming out the other end. So let's see if I can get there with this. Okay, keying it now. Okay, uh, 93, uh, sorry, 99.58 watts. No, 100 watts. Now what's coming out the other end is... 98, so about six, seven tenths of a watt different. Okay, so the difference was maybe seven tenths, and we had four tenths before. Um, so the net difference is about three tenths of a watt. So there's, there's really no loss in the uh, the Nye Viking. So I'm gonna uh, next. I'm going to transmit in, and uh, I'm not going to do much in the way of adjusting. I'm just going to let it uh, yeah, stay at the position it's in right now, and I'll put power into it. And we'll see what the difference is. Again, one coupler is on the in, this one. Uh, and that's reading 99, uh, roughly 99.8. And coming out the other end is 99.0. Okay, so the difference is 8 tenths. The in and out on that uh, Nye Viking is virtually the same. There really is no loss. Um, so next I'm going to go to the, uh, the Drake uh, MN2000 and I'll take a break here and connect the cables, move things around so I can do it. This is the um, MN2000. Got a coupler at the beginning of it or the in and a coupler at the out. Going to key into it and see what happens. Okay, there's 68 watts and 67 coming out about eight tenths of a watt difference I think what that was let's see 6.724 6.724 virtually no difference between the in and the out they're, they're within four tenths of a watt which was the difference between the couplers when we made the first test so now I'm going to move on to the um, uh, automatic tuner uh, Okay, here's the Elecraft KAT500, and I can put um, power from the KPA500 through it. 506.51 Alright, there's 514 watts uh, going uh, coming out rather going into the tuner and 513 coming out so maybe one watt difference and we know the couplers are different by um, four tenths of a watt there's 514 Versus 510. May have throttled back a hair. Okay, 508.4. 507, well, same number, 508.4. Well, <laughs> I, again, I'm surprised. Um, Basically, the answer is, what's the difference between the antenna tuners? Nothing. Um, these guys, and I tested every one I had pretty much, were just as efficient as the big ones. And by that, I mean the losses were almost nothing. Um, at Out of um, 500 watts, maybe one watt, something that you could never measure. Well, I mean, w with any kind of accuracy with the stuff that I have, um, if we were in a lab and we had some sophisticated equipment, probably we could 
figure out a, a better number, but um, in terms of what I could do at 100 watts, not even one watt loss difference between this one, this one, or the other ones. Even kind of a junky homebrew one that I that I have, I tried it, and it, it worked great too. So to answer the question, which antenna tuner is the more efficient, the little guys or the big guys, the answer is they're the same. And uh, never would have guessed that. Um, that flies in the face of what we know about uh, uh, the queue of circuits and coils and other stuff. But that's how I measured it, and I didn't fudge the, uh, the results. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the prior video I did on testing two transceivers uh, in the first three days had about 5,000 views, which was a huge number. I haven't done a follow-up video to that, but I, I'm going to. So, uh, But I want to get a few more votes. It's been, kind of, it's been really interesting. Some really great comments from, uh, from folks. Hopefully, uh, I'll get the same kind of comments on this about uh, antenna tuners that I generally haven't liked and haven't used, and now I've got a whole different perspective on them. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be wonderful. In any case, 73. I'm Jim, W6LG. See you the next time. Thanks.